building a 3D printer from the ground up. Um, we got a kit from here in China, and it's, it came with some basic instructions, um, a manual. Uh, the students are now putting together that 3D printer, and we're not scaffolding anything. We're, we're just asking them to, here it is, go. And so they're actually having to make decisions again about what happens, how it's going to be built. We help interpret the manual. We help problem solve. We offer solutions. Um, we've had the engineers in a couple of times to get the kids started when they get to a sticky point. But basically, they just come in and they're just building. Um, seeing girls who um, are doing very well, and we have one group of girls that are just going like gangbusters and are really doing a wonderful job and are now our example group. And it's also a surprise to see how 12 year olds tackle a problem like that. You know, I think I think as, as teachers, it's, it's really our duty to make sure that kids are being equipped for the 21st century. And um, I think we're really gonna start to see, and we already are seeing, a huge need for more people to understand coding. We started doing lots of scratch activities uh, and then that moved to Code Avengers. They've been learning about HTML coding, and so they've actually been able to use what they've learned from our coding sessions uh, to tie in with blogging. And, so, and sometimes they found that it's much easier to actually use the HTML tags. So they create uh, a robot that can be controlled by uh, Bluetooth with your phone, and so um, we'll put them in the arena, and then they just kind of fight to whichever one falls over and can't move anymore. The students have surpassed me in terms of constructing the robots. They're a lot more creative than I am. One group of uh, females who had never used robots before this, their bot was actually probably the most successful out of all of them. And it's just really nice to see um, just their confidence grow. In art, uh, fourth graders have been working on um, designing um, jewelry using a uh, 3D app. Um, uh, called 123D Sculpt, and then taking those designs and putting them on a cloud, and then uh, 3D printing them. We don't have the means to cast bronze, or um, and the students and I really discussed in depth why ceramics isn't a good choice. It's breakable, it's too heavy, it's too big, why other materials? And we really justified, um, they really justified why 3D printing. I think it's really important to showcase to an authentic audience um, because it allows for um, our students to um, see that there's value placed on their work. And not just because it's cool, not because it's uh, 3D printing, um, but because the aesthetic and it's so well done that they can actually um, say this, this is what I've made from, from nothing. They literally started with a blank screen on the iPad. Well, when you look at um, an e-portfolio, it's basically a compilation of their favorite work. This year, my students created their own completely. Instead of saving all of the work till the end of the year, most of the kindergartners had forgotten about it. So when we do an e-portfolio, they just take a picture of it and they say, oh, I really want this in my, my e-portfolio, and then they send it home. I think a lot of times um, they have questions that they might be afraid to ask in class or that they just need a little more time to work out and so if they can see a teacher work through the problem and they can watch it over and over again um, or they can slow it down or they can take the time to practice it with that guidance that they might not be getting one-on-one -on -one in a classroom, that's really helpful. Um, we do our videos with education, so we're modeling and the kids, we can see all the thinking that the kids are doing because they are explaining themselves but it's not just a tool to explain things to others, it's also a tool to reflect on what they've done, which is important. So the differentiation that comes out of this is just so natural in the process and really, um, it really just um, is fulfilling as a teacher to know that you're meeting a student where they're ready to learn. I wanted it to be a passion project and that's how it kind of came about. So we figured out what passion means, we figured out that they have something that they're very passionate about and some of them went along and said, hey, I want to do this for the world or I'm passionate about this because I want to learn more about it. And <laughs> these projects are unbelievable and they have been coming in before school starts. Like, Mrs. B, can we come in? Can we stay inside during morning recess? I'm like, sure. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to ever say no to learning. Um, they use uh, an app called Mostra where they're keeping track of their workout. They also have videos uh, that they can compare themselves to. I'm always giving them feedback on Mostra. I'm also putting pictures and video that I take as I walk around onto their binders. You know, usually they just want to play dodgeball or volleyball or basketball, but they are really concerned about improving their bodies and improving their health. 
I, I think that's something you actually see this is different from traditional way and they're really engaged and they're really actually learning they expand their Chinese vocabulary. Paper Desk app gives them many ways to express their ideas. So those who are ready, write, and ELL students like our French student, she used the audio to record her ideas. And then yesterday she decided to use the keyboard to type. So she took the risk. I'm amazed at how my four and five year olds can open up Book Creator and make a book, record their voice, record their story, and send it to their parents. It's amazing. So in writing workshop, the kids are, um, they're writing small moment stories, and so they go through the whole process of editing and revising and choosing a piece and publishing it in a hard copy, and then we took that and made it into an edge of creation. And they were able to add their own expression to it and the emphasis that they intended when they wrote it, and then they can share that as well um, with family that's not here in China. A student who, when we would meet, you know, one-to-one -one conferences, uh, would be quiet and shy, and you know, she always did her work, um, but it seemed like she was, you know, a little bit, you know, uh, withdrawn or, you know, not really into it. And then, you know, once we've created the, the digital stories and going back and looking at it, it blew, you know, blew me away. The cupcake is gone. The cupcake. The cupcake. The cupcake. Oh my way! It's a cupcake. And you know, it was, it's been shared globally um, and everybody who sees it you know loves it all the praise that she got from it, it I see her now and you know, she's in second grade and she seems just like a more confident student you're still doing all the good teaching that comes with the workshop uh, model and reading and writing because these things are always connected but then you've got that wonderful added um, transformational piece where kids uh, focus on the writing piece doing what they normally do they're having their mini lessons and so on and then we move into um, uh, using technology to enhance what they've done. Um, we've had a tremendous response to our online publishing party. Um, parents did a great job of helping share the link of each individual blog. So we had grandparents and aunts and uncles from all over the world coming in and commenting and um, creating their own posts, inspiring new ideas. So um, it's been really fun. Their level of commitment to really doing their best work in publishing has increased. In this particular class, we did some digital storytelling for uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, William Shakespeare's. And um, rather than having the kids read the entire play from start to finish and do a sort of a dry, drudgery version of Shakespeare, which is too often the case, what they did was they chose a scene and um, they infused it with their own language, they infused it with their own choice of images. Some of it was live action, some of it was animated. And so what we ended up with was this just beautiful um, arsenal, for lack of a better word, of, of just fantastic um, uh, reimagined snippets from the play. Uh, Yearbook Club has been off to a great start. It's our second year with iBooks Author. Um, so we have actually just finished the print book and we're getting ready to upload the digital book to the uh, App Store. When, when everybody found out that we were doing the digital version, uh, everybody was excited, um, but immediately people were like, what about the printed book? The printed book was still getting made. Uh, what the digital yearbook did was allow us to transform the process um, and add things, media, that we couldn't add to the printed book. Um, I created a Facebook page um, and called it Canoflic Fit, and the idea was to get my kids to start working out outside of PE class. And so we were seeing how social media would affect their, their external motivation, how um, the accountability of sticking to that workout by putting it onto Facebook, sharing their pictures, sharing their plans, um, and getting that feedback from their peers, um, from teachers, from their family, how that would keep them um, to continue working out on their own and not just me saying, go work out, go run, go do push-ups, go do sit-ups. It's huge. I mean, the, the kids who are actively posting are actively doing, and the support that they're giving is, is awesome. Um, I have one student, actually, she's over here. She, uh, she did, um, on her last fitness test, on her last uh, sit-up test, she did 40 sit-ups, and she did a 30-day ab challenge. And at the end of that 30-day, we had another um, fitness test. She was able to do 145 sit-ups correct form, other kids were like, what? This really works? 
that's awesome. And so I actually started to see a lot of more, a lot more kids doing 30-day plank challenges, push-ups, sit-ups. We're working on developing global citizens in our class and uh, through the use of Writers Workshop and Twitter as our platform. The exciting part is seeing the children um, want to go onto Twitter, want to write, want to connect with other classes and uh, want to share what they're learning in the classroom. Social media can connect us in so many different ways. So we started early by hooking up with a class from the graded school of Sao Paulo in Brazil and they became instant buddies and they started a Google Doc together where they created their own project sharing what about the classroom. That stemmed out to some collaboration with a school now in Bahrain, all via links that I found through Twitter. But I blog because I want to engage in what's happening in the world and I want the people to know that there's something relevant that I'm talking about and I'm modeling that ability to communicate effectively. I preach it to my kids and I want them to be able to do it themselves. Um, so blogging has been a huge tool in which I can bring that to the forefront um, and, and connect. Uh, I love Twitter because it's kind of cool. We get a dialogue with people all around the world. And the SIS rocks, we can get a snapshot of what's happening throughout the school without leaving our classroom. It makes learning visible and parents see what's going on in the classroom on a real-time manner. And I like to collaborate with other teachers too. Well, I think we have a community here and we learn from each other. So I think it's important to share the learning that is happening in the classroom. Both my teaching and the students' learning is not been limited in the classroom. That's what I love. Because this is such a huge stage for us to explore. We are collaborators. We are independent learners. We are communicators. We are global citizens. We are complex thinkers. At SIS. At SIS. 在蛇口国际学校。